I don't think it's possible to even overestimate the failure to meet the needs of the people of Indiana in terms of access to primary care. It's been projected that we, we're going to need 2,000 primary, new primary care physicians by the year 2020 in Indiana. Physician shortage is real. I didn't realize it was that bad. You go out in the country and there's not a doctor out for 50 miles. What do you do when you're sick? You know, somebody breaks an arm, somebody has uh, appendicitis. Then this puts a strain on the families, it puts a strain on the hospitals, it puts a strain on the community knowing that we don't have those services available to us. We here to call. We're here today on the eve of the first orientation session for medical students, 162 of them, right here in Indianapolis, Indiana, at Mar on Marion University's campus. The development of this medical school was a gift to the people of Indiana. You know, I served on the board when Dan talked about, you know, beginning the medical school. Everybody said, okay, we got nurses, let's go all the way. And here we are, I'm just so excited. The Indiana Osteopathic Association has looked at trying to start an osteopathic medical school in Indiana for many, many years. But we were always interested in finding just the right partner. The Michael A. Evans Center for Health Sciences will house Indiana's first new medical school in more than a century. To have a new medical school within Indianapolis is truly a dream. Indiana is going to have so many more of us now, really trained physicians, I think, that Marion's going to be a great school and they'll do that for us. So um, I think it's going to be a, a great opportunity for um, Indiana. This is the only osteopathic school in the state of Indiana and the only Catholic osteopathic school in the country. I believe in uh, our philosophy on treating patients, uh, not just in their body, but body, mind, and spirit. I love the values, dignity of the individual, stewardship, peace and justice, reconciliation. What I like most about the Evans Center is the opportunities for the medical students, the nursing students, the medical faculty and the nursing faculty to collaborate. They did we move down and get your bowel sounds. Training physicians and nurses together from the outset is very forward thinking in that, in that this begins very early on uh, the process of creating a culture of mutual respect, of recognition of the contribution of every member of the healthcare team. We're going to give our do a med administration today through this machine that replicates the Pixis, which truly is state of the art in nursing education. We have to teach them how to work in a 2025 environment because that's when they finish their training and actually get out into practice. Now switch your mind. Leave your fingers in the same place. To see. We have the microphones, we have the recordings of the lectures um, in the anatomy lab, in the OPP lab, we have the cameras so that way from every angle you can see what's going on and you're able to continue in the, your education and follow it. This is a very high-tech facility. Um, everything here is digital, everything here is wireless. Empathy, not sympathy. I think that's really important. And as you walk through and you look at the opportunity to take the educational experience and, and utilize the modern technology and the fact that, that they can use all this digitalization and share information and gather information from everywhere and have it stored in things like an iPad, are you kidding me? There's two. There's three. Mm -hmm. This is our osteopathic manipulative medicine lab and this is where our students will learn how to do um, osteopathic manipulation. So go ahead and turn to the left. 
We believe that structure is intimately related to function, and ultimately that's kind of one of the postulates of osteopathic medicine, that the body has uh, an inherent ability to heal itself. I think for me, osteopathic medicine was really important because it looked at the person as a whole. Good morning all. Today we're going to talk about the anatomy of the vertebral column. Our students will start clinical work actually in their first year. So they'll be going out to uh, work with uh, physicians in hospitals and in clinics. Those students then are going to train in our hospitals with like physicians who will develop their professionalism, if you have the knowledge and the skills to help people, um, you got to do what you can. So that's another way of assessing the progress of labor. This is really, really special, and I just know when it's all said and done that the students who come through here are not going to be at all disappointed that they chose Marion. General Assembly has approved a $10,000 scholarship for the students at Marion University. It obviously doesn't pay for all of their costs, but it pays a significant part. And in return, we're asking them to spend time in Indiana and serve underserved communities. I think this osteopathic medical school is going to really help, especially primary care doctors, because 60% of all DO students go primary care. We're so blessed to have a new medical school here where I can study here and then become a physician and serve the people who helped give me that education. I'm personally interested in doing uh, family medicine, so I'll be able to uh, give back to the community here in the Midwest, especially Indiana. We're increasing the supply of physicians in the state by over 50 percent. That's a good thing, and we're just proud to be a part of it. The white coat is a symbol of the power to be a healer. The students before us today represent the glowing flame of the future for osteopathic medicine in Indiana. When I look at these students and I look at this program, I have great hope for healthcare in all our communities uh, throughout the state. I plan on moving back to Odin, Indiana. My dad's a primary care physician down there and uh, it's my goal to continue the tradition. And so you think of that ripple effect of how 162 medical students today can affect the lives of thousands and thousands into the future and it's just it just gives me goosebumps to even think about it. You know, in four years that first class will walk out of here. Ten years from now, fifteen years from now, it'll still be producing those physicians. But every year they're gonna walk out of here with those degrees. It's incredible. This school won't stop. I definitely see myself in a small community um, serving those that need a physician. I'm very excited. I can't wait. <laughs>